Comic Book Savant, episode 410. Welcome back to the Comic Book Savant Podcast. I'm your host, James Harris. This episode is going to be a spoiler-filled review for Universal Studios' Bumblebee. Uh, So if you haven't had a chance to see the movie, you definitely want to stop the podcast at this point. Um, See the movie, then come back and check it out. Um, If you haven't seen the movie and you're on the fence about it, just go over to youtube.com forward slash comic book savant. And right now I have a non-spoiler review up of the movie. So if you're still debating about seeing it, it's been out a while since, you know, since the holiday season kicked around for Christmas. Uh, But if you still are on the fence, you get a non-spoiler review there. And like I said, it's still in theater. So if you want to check out the movie, do that and then come back and check out this spoiler uh, review po- um, podcast afterwards. So that is your first, last, and only warning. Um, before we get into the episode, as always, I'd like to give a shout out to my friends over at the Comics Podcast Network. Uh, if you like what I do here and you want to find more or similar content, definitely check them out. There, You can find them over at comicspodcast.com. There are literally hundreds of different podcasts listed there that cover everything from uh, particular publishers, teams, individual characters, um, all different types of genre underneath the comic book uh, umbrella. So you definitely would have a lot to choose from. If you like a single person podcast like myself, you can find that there. If you like more roundtable discussions, they have that too. It's just so many different uh, categories that you can find of other podcasts out there that are comic book related. So if you're interested in finding more content, definitely check out my friends over at the comics podcast network over at comicspodcast.com. And even also too, if you're a creator, um, not just a listener and you want to join a network to kind of bolster your status and help you, um, uh, potentially pull in more, uh, listeners, definitely you can go contact the admin and see about joining on the, uh, comics podcast network. It, you know, it, that was the whole reason why we, um, we all came together and kind of formed it many years ago was to kind of help each other cross promote our different shows and projects and things like that. So if you're new to the um, podcast creation and you want to gain, uh, some additional exposure. It doesn't hurt to contact the admin when you go over to the site to see about well, what you would need to do to uh, become a member. Uh, Cause that can always give you a little boost, especially when you're first starting out and trying to find your way and, and gain uh, listeners to be a part of a network like that. That'll help push your, uh, when your new episodes come out and things like that, that always is helpful. So definitely look into that if you're um, a creative as well. Now, um, last but not least, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, the sponsor for this in every episode, which is instocktrades.com. Uh, just one of the best places you can go online when you're looking for bound slash collected editions, uh, collections. They have uh, ma- manga. They have um, Marvel Masterworks. They have the Absolute DC's Absolute Editions, oversized hardcovers. Uh, you name it, they pretty much have it. The oversized bound editions like um, Action Comics 1000, those special um, uh, bigger bound uh, single issue things, they'll have those as well. Uh, so definitely check them out. They have discounts from 35 42 up to 50% off with their deals of the week. They update them, if I remember correctly, every Tuesday afternoon. They'll update a new listing of the um, the um, featured selections that are 50% off. So they're constantly being updated. If you're a U.S. customer and you place an order $50 or more, you get free shipping within the U.S., which is a little, you know, cherry on top of already the great savings that you have. If you happen to live outside of the U.S. and you place order through InStockTrades.com, you still get all the great savings. And they have some of the most competitive uh, shipping rates around uh, for international shipping, depending on what country you are. So I'll say they're competitive. They're not the lowest, but they're some of the most competitive that you will find around. So you can still save uh, a ton of money. And I've met quite a few people um, online that actually um, that live in other countries that frequent using InStock Trades quite a bit. And save, um, they say they save a ton of money for what they do that they, you know, importing comics 
you know, locally for them in from their own country that it, it, you know, all in all, it comes out cheaper. So definitely keep that in mind and don't let that scare you off from trying to service and saving you uh, a butt ton of money. But with all that being said, let's get into the meat of the episode, which is all about uh, Universal's um, Bumblebee. I was kind of skeptical. I didn't know if I was going to really um, cover this on the show, but I've covered the previous Transformer movies. The Transformers, just the, similar like to G.I. Joe, they've um, crossed over from being toys to cartoons. Um, they've, you know, have had um, a long running comics, you know, Transformers as well as um, uh, G.I. Joe's. I think both started off with Marvel in their inception in the 80s. Um, IDW, um, IDW Publishing has really taken the reins with um, with Transformers as well as GI Joe, um, and they get, they really IDW has a lot of really good licenses. They have Star Trek, and they do some great um, Star Trek comics, which I've talked about and reviewed in the past. Um, so I only felt it was fitting to do a review for for this movie during the holidays. You know, my wife has a lot of time off, so since, you know, we'll, I'll catch up and go see a lot of movies, because I hadn't really done a ton of movie reviews. You know, we did Into the Spider-Verse, then we had um, Aquaman that we I reviewed last week, and now this. So, like, I think in a span of, like, a seven-day period, we saw Into the Spider-Verse, Aquaman, Bumblebee, and then I had to go see Mary Poppins because my wife wanted to see that. I had to have the pick of three, and she had one. So, you know, you do what you got to do as a husband sometimes. But enough about that. So I was kind of, you know, skeptical because I really... The Transformer movies outside of, like, the first one was, like, that I enjoyed. They've been kind of declining each film for me. Actually, my wife is actually a bigger fan of the Transformer fran- movie franchise than I am. I was always a fan of the toys and in the earlier comics, I haven't read um, many of the new comics, but um, this actually prompted me to want to read some of the um, more recent IDW uh, books, which I'm going to talk about later on. So we have Bumblebee. This is directed by Travis Knight. If you guys are not familiar with Travis Knight, he's the son of the the, um, guy that created Nike sneakers. Um, he decided to take a different path and, um, he, um, had, um, he created the studio, um, that does Kobo and the two strings. I can't remember what the, um, let me look it up real quick. I hate, I forgot to put that down. Um, stop motion studio. I think it is his studio. Maybe it's not his studio, but he's done a lot of work in animation. He's he's um, an animator, um, so he's done work leading up to this. Kobo and the Two Strings was his um, his uh, de- directorial debut, but he's been a animator, um, a lead animator on a ton of different things. I mean, going back as far as like uh, the PJs, uh, which was like a Eddie Murphy um, claymation stop motion type animation. Then he was a lead animator on Paranorman. Uh, the box trolls and then again Kubo and the two strings was his directorial de- debut and he was also an animator on that as well um so he's been around the world of animation but this was his first foray into live action so it was curious because i heard a lot of good things about Kobo. i've seen paranorman and i've you know i watched the pjs way back in the day when that came on that was like early 2000s um when that show came out so i had you know, seeing the different things, and I was like, well, how's that going to work from him going from, you know, this, um, you know, stop animation kind of claymation type style to like live action? How is that, you know, how is he, he going to do with that? And, um, you know, so I was really, you know, curious on how that was going to go. So when I heard it, I, it kind of raised my eyebrows because Kubo had such a good reception, but I never, I didn't get a chance to see it, but I'd seen some of his other work, but he didn't direct that. He was just an animator. So I was really like, it was interesting pick when I heard, you know, him being, you know, announced as the director. And also this movie was written by Christina Hodson. Now uh, we go back a little while. I've talked about Christina before because her name has been linked heavily with, um, Warner Brothers slash DC Films, uh, she's been tasked to write um, the Batgirl script. Uh, She also, um, 
you know, that movie is kind of in a weird place. So then they moved her over because they liked what she her like what she started with or her pitch for the Batgirl film. Um, they moved her over the birds to pray because they're, they're kind of ramping up production on that. So then she got moved over to writing that as well. And, um, other movies she's written that were actually made. Cause these are all this stuff is, you know, you know, uh, Bumblebee just coming out. Then we don't know specifically when Batgirl's coming out. We know birds of prey, the emancipation of Harley Quinn, I think, or something like that. That's coming out. I'm assuming, um, it might be like 2020, I think. I think they start filming like later this year. Um, so um, a lot of stuff she's done hasn't made the light of day. But she wrote the movie Shut In and Unforgettable or the other writing credits for two movies that she actually written. Which uh, I remember like Shut In maybe had Naomi Watts or something. It was like a horror movie. Um, I don't know about Unforgettable. But they're like movies that kind of came and went. But she's um, building up a little buzz for herself. Just, you know, Warner Brothers tapped her. And she was one of the many writers that went in when um, Hasbro and Universal did the whole big writer's room and had all the different, um, you know, top talent, like, come together. And they, like, mapped out because they wanted to do this big shared universe between Transformers, G.I. Joe, Visionary, like, all these old Hasbro properties that they acquired. And they did this big war room with all these talented people um, together. And, like, that's when I first heard about her and that she was tapped to write a Bumblebee script and, you know, the movie came to fruition. Um, So she's, we're going to be hearing a lot more of her name going in the future. This is definitely a good start for her. Um, to really kind of put her on the map. Cause like I said, no, I really, I vaguely remember shut in. I don't think I've ever heard of unforgettable. So she's on the up and up. She's definitely, her profile's definitely been raised the past few years. And now her projects are starting to her These bigger projects that she's involved with are starting to come to the light of day. So, um, yeah, her star is definitely on the rise, which is always good for that diversity in there and in, in the screenwriter side of things. The breakdown for the movie is as follows. On the run in the year of 1987, Bumblebee finds refuge in a junkyard in a small California beach town. Uh, Charlie, on the cusp of turning 18 and trying to find her place in the world, discovers um, Bumblebee battle-scarred and broken. And the cast is as follows. We have Haley Steinfeld as uh, Charlie Watson. We have Dylan O'Brien doing the voice of Bumblebee for the brief time he had a voice in the movie uh which was kind of cool i like dylan from um the um dang what's the movies um maze runner the maze runner movies uh then we have megan price as amber john cena as agent burns justin thoreau um doing the voice as dropkick we have angela bassett as doing the voice for shatter and we have um greg griffin as um, R.C. and Peter Cullen as Optimus, doing uh, reprising his role as Optimus Prime. And I definitely have to say, this movie is is a great film. Uh, is To me, I would have to say, hands down, this is the best Transformers movie I think I've seen since the 1985 animated film. Um, it was a lot of love put into it. And let me say this, it's, it's not treading any new ground here it's not reinventing the wheel i mean if you've seen movies and like the, i'm just gonna say this if you've seen if you've seen et if you've seen iron giant um any movie like that is ba- you've seen this movie it's not you know the the plot is relatively simple if you yes et i say yeah et and and Iron Giant are the two kind of movies that pop into mind. Like if you've seen those two movies or even one of those two movies, you're going to be familiar with the plot and set up and how this, this movie flows. It still doesn't make it, um, it doesn't make it a great movie. It just makes it a good fun movie. And, um, it was just like a lot of love and attention put into it. And Travis Knight did a great job directing the film. I, you know, I definitely feel like after coming out of this movie, that I want to see him do more generation one transformer movies. I know they have some certain, you know, um, things in place. It was rumblings that they might do an Optimus prime, like, um, breakout movie. Um, this, 
So I'm really curious to see where he might go next. I think when the movie premiered, he talked about he was really passionate on he wanted to do a Transformers animated film kind of as an homage to the 1985 original animated film because he loved it so much. Um, I would like to see him do a sequel to, to Bumblebee. Like I said, it didn't reinvent the wheel, but it was just so well done. And I feel like, you know, with his background in animation, well, they really did something that they weren't, weren't able to do. And the other transformer movies were really make the transformers be the star of the film. Um, you know, Bumblebee had a full blown personality. He had a full story arc from beginning. Bumblebee wasn't the same in the beginning of the movie as he was in the end. He was a fully realized and fleshed out character that had a story arc that went through the whole movie. And I felt like they felt so reliant. The Michael Bay transformer movies relied so heavily on the human counterparts and the movies centered around them with the transformers kind of being the sidekicks to the humans where here is the other way around. And that's how it always was in the, you know, the cartoon and the, and the comics is that the transformers are the main characters. So he was able to do that. And just with the setup and the CGI work, the CGI work was really top notch in Bumblebee hands down. I like the way they scaled back from the Michael Bay version of the transformers, where it's like, where you see them transforming in midair and fighting you, it's just so hard to follow and you can't make anything out. It's just a bunch of flying parts all over the screen. They scaled it back to simpler transformations not so many the um especially like the fight scenes between the transformers they were really shot well and framed well and you they were very they were choreographed just as well as the best live action fight scenes that you would see in a movie and they were full screen so you can see everything um you can make out the flow of everything so much better and it was it was so less confusing i mean it'd be whole sections like five or ten minute sections i can remember a fight scenes in a michael bay movie that i just it was the stuff on the screen i couldn't make any of it out and i was just utterly confused like who's this and you know what you know this what's going on screen i see a bunch of flash and it was flashed with no substance. We're here. Everything was fully realized and, and it, it, you felt it. Um, and the fight scenes were done so well, which I feel like it can be go so wrong in, a, in, um, in movies that are, are reliant heavily on CGI. But they did such a great job. You know, they were, you know, uh, fist fighting between the two robots and different techniques and stuff. You saw the techniques. You saw the punches and the counters. It wasn't, like I said, it just wasn't an overabundance or a sensory overload. And I remember me reviewing the previous Transformer movies. I've always spoke on it being sensory overload because it was just so much going on at the screen. They really slowed that down, calmed that down. And even the things with the fights and even the quiet moments, they were fully realized and carried so much emotion. Um, the animation and Bumblebee's face, especially because, you know, um, you know, we get the origin of his voice box being ripped out um, and, you know, that he can't talk. So we, we get to hear his voice briefly, like I said, from, you know, uh, Dylan O'Brien. But then the rest of the movie, you know, him trying to communicate through facial expression, hand expressions that was done so well, you know, and so many people and friends, you know, especially the females, like they're like, he oh, was so cute. He, 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 I cried. And, you know, it was like really, really well, like so many females, especially females, like my niece, my sister, even, um, my wife was like, I got a little teary eyed. Like that's, that's a mark of just good, acting in good direction and just a lot of love was put in this movie throughout. Um, and again, the story is nothing special. Um, like I said, we, it's stories we've seen before, you know, um, but it worked. It just worked. Sometimes you don't have to reinvent the wheel to just for something to be good, entertaining and fun. And I think, you know, so many movies have gotten so far away from that because they get caught up in their own hype and trying to top what the next one has done instead of concentrating, concentrating on just telling a good story and producing a good product. And I think that's the one thing that and, I, and I've been 
sometimes because we get so many of these movies and us being fans, like not all of us get a chance to go to the movies. Like I, you know, I have a good theater very close by that I frequent a lot. Me and my wife frequent a lot. So, and for what I do being, being a content creator, I do the reviews, you know, you guys tend to like them. So I do them. So I tend to go see all these movies, but not everyone gets a chance or has the time to go out and see all these movies. So, you know, it, and I, you know, when you try to, you know, uh, figure out what to watch and what not to watch. And I think sometimes we consume so much of it, especially if we don't in the theaters, like when it comes out on home video or streaming or something, we'll, you know, we'll watch stuff, but we only have so much time. So it's hard to kind of decipher. And I think sometimes certain things become a slog. And I have to say this holiday season between the movies that I've talked about, um, far as, um, on the, on the channel with into the spider verse, Aquaman and Bumblebee, it kind of, I kind of become, I didn't come jaded. I don't think I'm jaded because I go in, but it gets, it revitalizes my excitement and anticipation for movies now because they're finding another niche. You know, they were building up in this genre of superhero comic book, Based movies has boomed so much, and they, everything was trying to take themselves so seriously and trying to one up the, the, the previous one. And now it's trying to settle down, and we're starting to see nuances in the the um, in the art side of it. This is an artful film. Um, again, nothing like you know. This is not the best movie I've seen all year. It was the best Transformers movie I think I see all year. Um, and it was entertaining. It gets back to the entertainment side and that's what movies are supposed to be. It didn't take itself so seriously. Um, it wrecked a lot of continuity because it's back in 87. Um, I think they'll figure it out because this was kind of like a, what they said, like a soft reboot prequel thing, but it, um, you know, we open up on Cybertron um, which I don't know why it took us so many films to finally see Cybertron in a Transformers movie, um, which I was so thankful about that. Um, so um, it wrecks some things. So, but I would like to see, see them go forward. I think this movie did extremely well. So I would like to see Travis come back to do a sequel. But again, he he's like he really is gun ho about wanting to do a Transformers animated film. I would like to see him do a Bumblebee trilogy, um, to be honest. And I would kind of dig them doing an Optimus Prime solo film as well. Um, you know, Peter Cullen is, you know, he, he, I mean, he's just so Optimus Prime with the voice thing. Um, and, you know, he did have, um, you know, he did show up in the movie in a few scenes. And, you know, the scene with him on Cybertron was like so cut out of the cart cartoon and just felt so awesome so as a fan of the transformers which like i said i was a diehard fan i had a ton of transformer action figures yeah, as a kid i used to love this series um it, it like really restored my faith like i went out since then and i bought um why did one of the idw collections that has like the first um like 12 or some plus some odd issues of the idw uh transformer series so i wanted to check that out and read that like it inspired me to be like yeah, i want to go read this in comics man i want more of this world it was because it was just so fun it was so fun and so good and it took me back to my childhood and you know like i said it the deal those three movies have really just put me in a good place when it comes to these kind of films. Like I said, even with Aquaman, it was like it, it, these movies, none of these movies, they're all fun and they're entertaining. Probably oops, sorry, hit the microphone. Probably, I would recommend all three of the movies and I've pretty much recommended all three movies throughout all of these reviews. Um, probably the most, the best one from, if you know, talking about score wise, is probably Into the Spider-Verse. Aquaman's fun. Aquaman's not going to be for everyone, but it was fun and it was nostalgic for me because it leaned heavily into like 80s and 90s old action films, boom bastic, you know, over the top, but done well and done with love. Same thing with this movie. It's not going to, it's not the best movie ever, um, but it's fun and it's entertaining and it's just a good story. And so, you know, and if you like Transformers, but you haven't liked the last movies, it's a good palate cleanser and it makes you optimistic for the future of what the franchise could be moving away from Michael Bay and getting some real people that grew up on this stuff that are true fans and not trying to make money for the studio. 
because I feel like if you get some people that care, that love the material, it's going to make money because it's going to, it's going to pull in those fans and the people that are, you know, curious and they're going to come see it and they're going to come, come see it again and, and again and again. And I feel like that's what this movie is. Like, I can't wait till these three movies come out on home video. Like these are movies that I could just watch over and over again and just, you know, just fill your heart with just happiness. You know, it's not like, you know, like if you watch Justice League or Batman v Superman, you're just like, that was heavy. You know, it was light. I felt good coming out of the, you know, the theater watching this, you know, had a spring in my step because it was just fun. And I think we miss that sometimes in it all. So my overall score out of uh, 10, I would give Bumblebee a, a 7.5 out of 10. Um, the one issue, the one problem that I had with the movie is I thought this I didn't mind John Cena being in the movie and he was okay in the movie. I feel like kind of, he was miscast. It, it's a typical role that I would imagine him playing when he first was getting into acting. John Cena is a pretty darn good actor and he's a really good comedic actor at that. And so I really felt like this was a step back for him. This was a role like when he first started trying to do movies that he would have did this role. So he kind of felt cause he's more dynamic of an actor and they didn't give him much to do, but I feel like, uh, if they do a sequel to this and, and kind of continue on this path, he can kind of pop back up and he could become more, um, have a more, uh, meteor role in said sequel and make him a more prominent and diverse character than just the muscle guy with, you know, um, super agent guy. Um, I would probably like to see that, but I felt like he was kind of miscast. He could kind of, that was a role that they could, could have thrown anybody in, um, they didn't need John Cena, uh, you know, but I, I guess to make sure people were coming to see the movie, if they were a fan of John Cena, that that would put button seats. Um, Haley Seinfeld did a phenomenal job as Charlie, her connection and the acting job. Like it was certain scenes where they were, they were so emotional and she sold them, you know, against the CGI Bumblebee and it just worked so well. Um, again, 7.5 out of 10. Can't wait to this come out on home video. Um, so this is definitely one to get a chance. To, if you haven't had a chance to see it yet, definitely. If you have some free time before it leaves theaters to definitely see it. Um, shoot. I'm hoping that what we're in January, hopefully by like February, this is out on home video. So I can on digital, so I can scoop this up and watch it over and over again. Cause it's just a good time all the way around. Um, that's all I really got to say about Bumblebee. I just really have fun with it. And it just, follows the theme of just fun that I had at the movies during the break that I took, um, between these, um, comic related films. They're really refreshing is the one thing that sticks out in my mind to say that it really was a refreshing experience with all three movies. And they have me so optimistic for what's to come in comic book related cinema going into this year of 2019. It finished off a, a good, a great year for movies for us. It's super strong, but has, has me so juiced now. I'm like juice for Shazam and Captain Marvel, even more so, um, especially coming off of Aquaman with DC films where, you know, I've been pretty down on them, but seeing the direction they kind of took with Aquaman has me even a little bit more geeked up now for Shazam. Um, so I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm in a good place and I hope you guys are too. If you've seen these movies and you agree, you know, always leave feedback. You can email me any point in time, comic books of at gmail.com. You can go to comic books of It's a contact us page. You can send an email directly through the website, or you can hit me up on social media, um, available on, uh, Twitter and Instagram at comic books of Just follow me. Send me a message. Send me feedback. If it's something you want to see me cover on the show, hit me up there as well. Um, also, you can join the Facebook group. If you do a search for Comic Book Savant Discussion Group, you'll find it. Um, you just request to be a member, and I will approve it. And then you can come in and, you know, I try to interact and have you guys interact as much as possible. I like hearing from you guys and having conversation back and forth. It helps me run stuff, you know, show ideas by you guys that I'm planning on doing. You guys can give me feedback. And sometimes you guys can ask me direct questions like what stuff I like, what stuff I'm reading. And we can just have a dialogue and conversation and it helps me shape the direction to take the show in. Um, 
what else? Oh, if you like to help support the show, also check out my Patreon. It's uh, patreon.com forward slash uh, comic book savant uh, for as little as a dollar a month. You get access to the comic book savant extra podcast. So you get four extra episodes of me. Uh, a month with that support and it's different tiers but that's the very basic level so if you can see it fit to contribute it all goes back into the show i need new equipment i want to start traveling and hit some shows and stuff this year um so it all goes into that making the show better i got big plans i want to do more stuff and meet more of you guys so needs your help to be able to do that So if you have time, check that out as well. All the information and all the links to everything I'm talking about, if you don't remember, will be on the website, comicbooksavant.com. Check that out, and you'll find links to everything that I'm talking about. And that's all I have for you guys for this week. I'll be back next week with another episode of Comic Book Savant. You guys have a good week, and I'll see you next time. Take care.